Welcome back to Virtual Zoo School. Thank you so much for all your support and following us this far. Today, our journey into the zoo will bring us to some of our smallest animals. Hi guys, my name is Kim. I'm the senior primate keeper here at the Cape May County Zoo. And today I'm gonna to be introducing you to some of our monkeys. So if you joined us on day one, you might have remembered that you met the Siamangs and that Siamangs are apes. You also might remember that the difference between an ape and a monkey, the easiest way to tell is that apes don't have tails and monkeys do. So we're gonna be introduced today to some of our monkeys with tails. Um, this is actually Nico right behind you. He's jumping around. Hi, Nico, come say hi. Um, Nico is a common marmoset. Um, all of these little monkeys are in a family group called Calatricidae. I know that's a really big word, but I love it. We call them Calatricids. And these Calatricids include all of our tamarins and marmosets. We have five species here at the zoo. And this is our only species of marmoset, and he's a common marmoset. Um, although they're not endangered in the wild, we do have a, a little bit of an issue in, uh, throughout the world, but especially in North America with them becoming pets. Uh, unfortunately, they do not make good pets at all, and we don't recommend it. Uh, he did not make a very good pet, and he had to come to us to live out the rest of his life. Now, he is a little bit difficult because he does not really know how to be a monkey like our other monkeys. So he doesn't always get along with others, but luckily he gets along really well with Paige. And Paige is right over here in the doorway. She's coming out now. Hi, Paige. Um, Paige is a golden lion tamarind. You can see she gets her name because she's a beautiful golden color and also because she has what looks kind of like a lion's mane. So she's really pretty and striking. And this is a species that is endangered. So um, endangered animals means that they're having a lot of trouble in the wild. And one of their biggest problems is deforestation. These guys um, live all throughout South America in different areas in the forest. And uh, the golden lions live in the Atlantic coastal forest. And this is a place where their habitat's being depleted. Um, things like the pet trade are an issue. Increased agriculture is an issue. So they have a lot of threats to them. Um, the great thing, the great story and happy um, story about golden lion tamarins is that zoos actually helped reintroduce a lot of individuals into the wild. They sent zoo animals out into uh, the South American forest and reintroduced them and they were able to breed successfully and have offspring and help repopulate that population. So these guys are still endangered, but they're a lot better off than they were before because of zoos. So it shows a really great part that zoos can play um, to help animals in the wild. Um, so that's our golden lion and marmoset. If you want to follow me, I'll introduce you to everybody else. Um, as you can see, we have nice big windows into their dens, so you can see these guys year round. Um, they, so if you pop in here, oh, there we go. Here's Paige right here, if you can see her. So she's right in the window checking us out, wondering what are these people doing? There's the no people in the zoo. Um, a really important thing about these calatricids or tamarins and marmosets that makes them different than other monkeys is that they have claws instead of nails. So if you look at your hands, you have nails on your fingers. Those guys actually have claws. So that's a little bit different than our other monkeys that we hear of at the zoo because they all have nails too. All right, let's see our emperors right up there in their um, nest box outside. You guys wanna come say hello? Emperor tamarins are another species and we're gonna go in to feed them. Does that sound like a good idea? I'm gonna put on my PPE for them. This is Francois. Hi Francois. Good boy. And this is Nacho. Um, they are getting for a treat today blueberries, which is actually a really healthy fruit for them. And they're getting waxworms, which aren't so healthy. Um, waxworms, like a lot of the other insects we feed here are insect larvae. Um, they turn into moths, actually, which these guys love, too. They'll hunt for things in their yard. Here you go. Um, in the summer, they absolutely love all the insects. They'll catch butterflies. They'll catch crickets. They'll catch all different things in their yard. Um, they'll even go down to the ground sometimes to hunt on the ground. But usually, they find stuff in tree crevices. And that's where those claws come in really, really useful. Can you show us your claws? Look here. Up here. Yeah, show us those claws. Thank you. So we do a lot of training with these guys. You can see that there's a little crate right here. And actually, let me see if somebody will go in it for us. Crate? Nope, wrong. Come here, crate. They're like, what are you doing? Nacho, you're on the wrong side. 
crate. Load away. Good boy. So this crate, y'all see in all of our habitats, it's a little catty wampus there. I think that's why he didn't want to go in right away. Um, but we have these little crates in our habitats. And this is so if we need to take our tamarins to the vet, um, we can do that really easily by asking them to crate. We close that door and latch it, and then we can take them wherever we need them to go. This is a really positive way to move them around, to bring them to the vet, to move them to a new habitat. Um, so that's part of all of their training. You also saw me ask them to stand up before. That's also a really great part of training. So we can check them out and make sure they don't have any injuries. Um, we can do body condition scoring. We can um, just get a really good idea of if they're healthy. Hi, I'm sorry, one more, I know. Oh, good job. You guys can see that they have really amazing mustaches and this is how they get their name too, Emperor Tamarins, um, because they happen to look like an emperor's mustache. All right, guys, it was nice to meet you, thanks. All right, guys, so we're gonna continue our walk down what we call Tamarin Row. Um, we have, like I said, five different species here. So you just met the golden lions, the common marmosets, and the emperor tamarins. And we're gonna go down to the other end and meet our golden-headed lion tamarins and our contop tamarins. Um, these guys are some of my favorite to work with. They're really, really neat um, animals to work with because they're small and they're pretty friendly, although they're because they're small and they're prey animals, um, they are a little skittish and it takes a little bit of work to get them to know you and to respond to you and to take food from you even. Um, so it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but a challenge that we really enjoy. Uh, training is a really important part of what we do with our all of our monkeys and primates here at the zoo. So getting them to go into a crate or to sit on a scale is a really great challenge for the keepers. It's one of the things I love most about working with primates is that challenge. Now our golden heads um, really like to spend time this time of year in their nest box. So I'll show you their nest box inside if you're ever here and you're looking for them. I have some plants in here, live plants in here to make them more comfortable. But up there, um, you'll see there's a white nest box and the door is currently closed. We actually built this nest box, our maintenance department built this nest box with the ability, there's a handle on the inside where they can actually close it themselves. So when they don't want to be disturbed, they'll close that door. Sometimes when we ask them to train, they come right out and they're really excited to see a keepers. Sometimes we go in there and we ask them if they want to train and they shut the door on us. And we're like, oh no, they don't want to hang out with us. But it's important to give our animals choices and they don't want to train that day, that's fine. We'll train them later in the day or the next day. All right, and then we have our con tops. Hi, this is Cordelia right here. She's uh, in the window if you can see her. These guys are really well known for that poof of hair on the tops of their heads. Um, people think they look like little Einsteins or little old men. All right, let's see what you got. Oh, hi guys. Oh, you get a great shot of them here. Um, this is T on the right. His full name is Tam Tam. We call him Little T. And then that's Cordelia um, over on the left. And they're a breeding pair of uh, cotton top tamarins. Um, they are <laughs> really excited about us. And you can see that especially T's um, hair is really puffed up right now. They do that when they're kind of on the alert and they want to know what's going on. They really poof up that hair a lot. Um, you can see too from the map here on their um, board, um, all of our primates are, are uh, sorry, our tamarins are from South America. So this is a picture of South America. A lot of them are from Brazil, our Atlantic coastal regions over here. That's where our golden lions are from. Um, the uh, uh, emperor tamarins are from this area right here, where it's Bolivia and Peru. And then these guys are all the way from up here in Colombia. So they cover a large range, but each species is really small. These guys are actually critically endangered. So we talked about the golden lions being endangered and that that was a huge problem. These guys are actually critically endangered. So uh, they have an uh, even harder um, time right now and there's a lot of work being done to try to save them. Um, again, mostly from habitat loss, just people expanding and um, cutting down rainforests where they would typically live. All right, let's see if they want to say hello. What do you guys think? Like oh yes, I will take it. So this is T right here. T usually comes up to me first. Come here, Cordelia. Good girl. So these guys are um, actually called frugivores. 
Um, like the thiamine, we talked about frugivores before. Frugivores are fruit eaters. And then uh, if they're not eating fruit, they're eating insects. So they're also called insectivores. So that's insect eaters. That one's a little easy to remember because insect and insectivore are right in the word. Come here. Do you want a blueberry? Okay. That's okay. You guys can hear them talking too. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So these guys, again, are frugivores and insectivores. And our marmoset down on the end, he's a little different. He is... He is an insectivore and a gumivore. So he does eat some fruit, but the large portion of his diet is gum, is tree gum. The biggest difference between a marmoset and a tamarind would be their dentition. And uh, the marmosets actually have specialized dentition to gnaw holes in trees and extract gum. So that's what they eat um, primarily in addition to insects. So kind of neat diet. So now they chirped a little bit for us. Are you talking? You guys can hear they sound a little bit like birds when they chirp. They've actually done a lot of research with these guys, especially the cotton top tamarind, and found that they have their own special language. So they have 38 distinct sounds that they make, and they can string them together to make sentences. So it's really cool. We're going to link a video you guys can watch if you're interested in language. Um, but their language is pretty extensive, so it's really neat to be able to see that. Bye, guys. Thanks for letting us visit. So our challenge for you is to share your languages with us. Do you just speak English? Do you speak some other language? Do you even just know a few words in another language? We'd love to hear it. So share your other languages with us. That's your challenge for today. Thanks for joining us.